Hello and welcome to Our Devotions, where together we're developing lives with God at the center. I'm Daniel, and this is my amazing wife, Amanda. Hello, today we're gonna to be talking about how to deal with messed up people. It's <laughs> starting off in the book of Matthew. <laughs> so grab your Bible and get ready to dive right in. So the Christmas story is loads of fun, and if you Stop and pretend not to know the story. Like you go over it like it was new. It's weird. <laughs> like a lot of it doesn't yeah. make sense. Like when you grow up hearing the story around the Christmas tree and different things, you know it so nothing surprises you. Yeah. Because before anything was weird, you heard the story. Yeah. But when you think about hearing it for the first time, when you think about experiencing it, you like, dude, these people are crazy. <laughs> and so I want, I want to show you something from Joseph. In, in verse 19, like if we're following the story, an angel shows up to Mary and is like, hey, Mary, you're going to have a baby. And she's like, well, that's weird. Uh, how's that supposed to happen? I've never been with a dude. And, and he's like, don't worry. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon you, and you're going to be with a child. And she's like, so what? Well, she gets pregnant. And then she's got to tell Joseph. Yeah. And, oh, hey, honey, um, I know that we have never been together and that we're supposed to be getting married. Little problem. Uh, just wanted you to know that I'm pregnant, but don't worry, I didn't sleep with anybody. It was God. Right. <laughs> you're like, and she crazy. <laughs> and you're like, you, you just, you got to imagine how much heartbreak, how much, like, hurt, and how much disappointment appointment and she didn't even yeah because it's not like here like nowadays people date and decide who they want to marry back then who you're going to marry is decided for you it says that she was promised to him they're basically yep. start off engaged so to then all of a sudden be like my life is gonna have to take a completely different road than I imagined yeah so there's so much of this but as far as he can understand he has just been betrayed yeah. Somebody has just lied to him and betrayed him. And in verse 19, it says, and her, hus her husband or um, fiance, but they, they considered the engagement so important you had to divorce to call it off. Yeah. Being a just man. So his next actions is because he's just. Yeah. And unwilling to put her to shame resolved to divorce her quietly. Now, if, I, if this was most of us, we would be like, expose the person because it's their fault. Like, it's so easy to go, hey, what they're doing is hurtful to me, so let everybody know it's not my fault. Hey, everybody, it's them, it's them, it's not yeah. me. And or to go, hey, can I get a whole like rally of support? Can I go and tell everybody that I don't know what to do? My, my, um, my fiance is awful and she's lying and she's like, yeah. and there's this tendency that we have as, as people to try to rally support and it becomes so easy to gossip and to throw other people under the bus. Yeah. And he looked and he's not like, he's, he's not going, well, whatever, but yeah. he's going, I don't need to destroy you yeah. because of it. And then an angel shows up, you know, then as he's, it says, but... As he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear. And, and the angel tells him that basically that she was telling the truth and the Holy Spirit had come upon her. And, um, and it's, it's amazing, and the story goes on. But it got me looking because it defined his actions based on the fact that he was righteous. Yeah. Going, what is the righteous way to deal with messed up people? Yeah to people that lie to you, to people that hurt you, to people that have, have offended you. And, and it looks, and he goes, and he dealt with it kindly. Yeah. He didn't, um, he didn't hold up what appeared to be her sin for everyone to see. Yeah. He kept the circle of offense as small as possible. Yep, quietly, yeah. And if you look in, in Matthew chapter 18, Jesus is addressing how we navigate these things. And he says, uh, 
If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. And then if he refuses to listen, then you can, can talk to church. You can go to someone else. You can go further for help. Yeah. Um, but if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. This breakdown is so amazing when he says, you're going to go to him at first. You should not be going to your sister. You should not be going to, like, to gather up all of this support for your side of the story. He goes, no, go have a conversation. Give them a chance to apologize. Give them yeah. a chance to make it right. And if, if they don't want to listen, I love this, like, go get one or two people and tell. And in doing that, you may discover, if you get good people, they may look at you and go, the reason that they don't want to listen is because you're the problem. <laughs> <laughs> like, because sometimes we're like, what they did was wrong, and, and people will look at you and go, no, no, what you did was wrong. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they'll look and they'll go, hey, they'll get perspective to that other person who's feeling that same way, who's yeah. going, hey, no, it's, it's you. When they go, oh, hey, we're having a conversation. We now have a third party. Oh, wait, maybe, maybe I am wrong. Yeah. Maybe what I did was rude. Um, and, and gives them a chance to be restored. Gives them a chance to bring healing because so often we have it where two people have a conflict and one of them goes and tells all their friends, then they get their conflict straight, but all their friends are still mad. Yeah, absolutely. I, you see this, I think you're the one who shared it with me. <laughs> it's definitely the most common, I feel like, in women. <laughs> in our circles, it's somebody does something against one of my friends. It would always be, who are we mad at? Are we still mad at them? Even though it wasn't against me, it was against Kelly or you yeah. know, whoever. <laughs> you said, why are we mad at them? And you're like, yes. <laughs> like this, this circle of offense can spread so easily. Yeah. And one of the things that marked Joseph as righteous was he was determined not to spread the circle of offense. Yeah. He was determined to keep it small. And that's such a powerful thing for us to learn yeah. and go, hey, as I navigate people and around the holidays, around gathering with extended family, it is not uncommon for there to be clashes. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. But it's an opportunity to go, am I going to rally my support or am I going to be righteous and work to, to deal with things as quietly as yeah. I can and spread the offense as little as possible. Yep. And, and there, there was actions that were going to be taken. It wasn't that he ignored it and just said, oh, oh I don't see it. Right. right. He did deal with it. He was setting out to deal with things until an angel showed him that she was telling the truth. But he was trying to do it in as kind of a way and disgracing her as little as possible. Yeah. Um, so that, that was just kind of this, this nugget. There's just a couple of nuggets in, in the story that are easy to miss. Yeah, that's good. One of those things that I had to learn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's say our confessions out loud, okay? I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am loved by God. I am loved by God. The same power. The same power. That raised Christ from the dead. That raised Christ from the dead. Lives in me. Lives in me. I am more than a conqueror through him. I am more than a conqueror through him. I'm the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. My prayers are powerful and effective. My prayers are powerful and effective. I am chosen by God. I am chosen by God. I am adopted into God's family. I am adopted into God's family. I am redeemed and forgiven. I am redeemed and forgiven. In Christ. In Christ. I am seated with Christ. I am seated with Christ. Far above every enemy. Far above every enemy. Every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. Is mine in Christ Jesus. Is mine in Christ Jesus. All of God's promises. All of God's promises. Are for me in Christ. Are for me in Christ. I am God's workmanship. I am God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus. For good works. For good works. I am strong and courageous. I am strong and courageous. Fear has no place here. Fear has no place here. For God is with me. For God is with me. God, I thank you that you're with us. God, that, yes, Lord. that you've loved us and forgave us even when we were full of sin. Yeah. God, I thank you that you didn't give up on us. 
God, I thank you that we can show your love to those around us and those that have hurt and offended us, that we can walk in righteousness, that we can navigate it according to your word, that we can bring things just to them, that we can give people an opportunity to repent, that we can keep the circle of offense as small as possible. God, we ask for forgiveness in the spots that we've done it wrong. And God, we ask that you would bring healing into our families. God, that you would be honored in and through us, that we could be men or women of righteousness that navigate things in a way that honors you. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We hope that this encouraged you. If it did, could you please hit like, share, and subscribe. And as always, we want to invite you into God's word for yourself to discover who he is and what he has for you. Be blessed. We'll see you again soon.